At the age of 29, I Ivan was a fairly happily married man. My wife Galia, 28 years old, an intelligent, representative woman who was gifted by nature with good looks. The only constant sore point in our marriage was my desire to have children as soon as possible. She did not have that desire. A girl named Rita worked with me. We were not very friendly, but we had to communicate at work. A group of 8 to 12 employees would go out once a month for pizza at lunchtime. And she and I were often in that group. We even sat next to each other twice. My only real one-on-one -on -one contact with her occurred when her computer went down at a very inopportune time. Usually someone from outside the ID department would immediately help the HR manager with her computer, but the flu was running rampant in the ID department that day. The only two employees who were not sick were tasked with a general system update, which could not be delayed because a possible malware was detected in the system. Since Rita and I had been with the group for lunch two days earlier, she called me in a panic. I immediately went to her office. After fixing the problem in 10 minutes, ran diagnostics on her computer, since I was there anyway, and she was fine with it, and was able to extend the 15-minute job to a half hour of pleasant conversation. I'm usually intellectually lazy, although I had enough innate intelligence to graduate from a decent engineering school. I spent most of my time playing basketball, chasing women, working out, and drinking. I didn't do any of that anymore except practice. I do my job pretty well, but I'm not a fanatic and I don't do much more than I should. Our company likes to do family events. On Saturday, near the beginning of July, we had a party at a boarding house with all sorts of activities, including a pool. After a few friendly games of volleyball, I got sweaty and decided to go for a swim. So I changed into my bathing suit, took a quick shower to avoid polluting the pool water, and went out to the pool deck. I saw my wife Galia, who looked very attractive in a bikini, which I thought was too small for a corporate event, sitting on a lounge chair and talking to other women. I gave Galia a quick kiss, walked to the deep end of the pool, and took a perfect high dive. When, after several dives, I climbed the stairs, emerging from the deep edge of the pool, a picture of an attractive woman appeared before me. Even though the tall woman was wearing a rather conservative covered swimsuit, it was impossible to hide how seductive her body was. While I was looking at her from behind, wishing we had sunglasses, she stopped, took off her hat and sunglasses, put them on a lounge chair, and continued on her way to the diving board. I saw her face when she did. It was Rita. As I watched her, I suddenly noticed something on her right thigh. I thought I stealthily followed Rita for the next 15 minutes or so, trying to get a better look at her. Finally, as I followed her up the high jump stairs into the pool, I got a really good look at her. It was a birthmark that really resembled a four-pointed star. After I came to my senses, I got dressed, lured Gallia out of the pool, and we ate lunch with a few other couples. When I got home that evening, I couldn't stop thinking about Rita her birthmark. When I heard the shower turn on, I decided it would be the best moment to relieve the tension and I could take my mind off of thinking about Rita. My wife was just as excited to join her. The next morning, I thought about Rita again. The birthmark kept bugging me and I remembered where I had seen it. I like to sit on adult websites, so there was this one hottie there who had a plastered face. I was just crazy about her and she had the exact same birthmark. I was still thinking about it when I went to a website where I found two more of her original photos of short video. The video didn't show her entire face, but it did show her chin and hair. At that point, given that I knew how conservative Rita had always been, I was sure she didn't know about these pictures and videos on the internet, and once she found out, she would definitely want them removed. Then I knew I had to do something. The first thing I did was try to reconstruct her face in one of the pictures, to make sure definitively that it was her. At the same time, if I could do that, it meant that others could too, and Rita certainly wouldn't want that. I called a friend of mine from uni who majored in computer science. Unlike me, he was really studious, and I knew he had a master's degree. After showing him this material, 
I told him what I would like to do. He replied, First, you have to figure out what application was used for blurring. Once you figure that out, contact me, and I'll send you the appropriate software tool. He then gave me instructions on how to determine the blur application, warning me that it would take a long time. After working for about 15 to 20 minutes a night for a week, I finally found the right app. That Friday, I sent an encrypted email to my fellow man, got the right tool as an attachment to his reply, and then it took me a while to do the recovery. We had a busy weekend, and it wasn't until Sunday evening that I used the tool as instructed by my fellow. I used the most provocative photo where her face was blurry. After a few minutes, it was no longer blurry. It was Rita. She looked pretty damn attractive. By Wednesday afternoon of the following week, after a little introspection, I decided that the best approach was to provide Rita with open source information in person. An anonymous email, even if sent to her personal email address and not her company address, could have been problematic. I really liked Rita. If she had killed the messengers, I would have been sorry. But it was the right thing to do. As fate would have it, we had one of our pizza days on Wednesday and she and I were present, but not sitting next to each other. On the three-block walk back to our office, I separated her from the crowd, and after a little chit-chat, I took a deep breath. Rita, there's something really important I need to talk to you about. If we have time this weekend so we can meet alone for twenty minutes at the most. I think, Ivan. What's the matter? I'm sorry, but I don't feel comfortable saying anything about this until we're in a private setting. I guarantee it's something you need to know. Apparently, she saw the serious look on my face and the drops of sweat appearing on my forehead. Because after a pause, she said, Okay, I'm working out at Planet Fitness on Saturday morning. I'll be done at 9.30 and we can go to the park behind the building and talk. If you want, you can join me at 8 a.m. as a guest. Although I have my own other workout facility that I go to regularly on Saturday mornings, I agreed. By then, we were back in our office building. On Saturday morning, Rita and I worked out at Planet Fitness. We didn't shower after our workout, but around 9.40, we wiped down and went outside on this gorgeous morning. I pulled out my car envelopes before we sat down on a secluded park bench, each with a bottle of water. So. What's the big secret? Rita smiled. I decided it was best to take a direct, very direct approach. Seeing through an internet site with racy photos, I came across a candid photo of you in a video. And with the photo video, it follows that they were taken hidden by the camera, that you didn't know about them. There are eight photos and one video. The photos have your face blurred, but when I suspected you were in them, I recovered one of them. In this envelope is a copy of each from the photo, including the one with your face restored, and a website where they and the video can be found. At first Rita thought it was a joke, but then when I held out the envelope, her face became serious. When she opened it, she gasped in shock and pressed her hand against the card. She didn't turn the picture toward me, and I looked anywhere but at her. Then she shrieked softly, then cursed. This bastard, I'm his. She looked at one picture much longer than the others. Is that the picture that made you realize it was me? Of course, it was the one that showed her birthmark. I nodded my head affirmatively. So that's why you followed me to the company party? She asked. Her tone wasn't accusatory, but it wasn't friendly either. Yes, but I didn't know you noticed. Mumbled I could feel my face reddening and my forehead protruding under, but not from the workout. I don't know if that makes you more or less weird, but at least it explains everything about your behavior. She, making me blush even more. We talked some more and went about our business. True, Rita kissed me unexpectedly before she left and said she would contact me if she needed my help. A few days after Saturday's revelation, a lot happened. Rita had a fight with her husband, Colia. From what I learned from the rumors, and later directly from her, she threatened him with divorce. Gallia began to behave strangely. Usually she was not capricious, 
but now often, unlike usual, her behavior became aggressive. A few days after our meeting, Rita invited me to lunch. There she told me that despite her best efforts and Colia's, the Eastern European site refused to remove the pictures of the videos because they were the most viewed content they had. Rita appeared very depressed. Not at all as friendly as usual. In the evening after our dinner, I went to see a guy who was rumored to be a black hat hacker. He thought he was a gray hat, though. I told him about the site that wouldn't delete the pictures. He said he could help for $5,000, and for $10,000, he could guarantee that the video photos would disappear forever. I showed my interest. That night, I called Rita for the first time ever when she was home. I told her what a black hat could do, what the cost of her work was. I assured her that I could work as a go-between. I also guaranteed that if they weren't removed, I would pay half the cost. She sweetly declined my offer of payment. It's not your fault. All this happened because of Colia, and he will pay for it, one way or another. But she accepted my offer to be a middleman. I got the money from Rita, and on Saturday morning I tracked down Dima, the black and gray hat. When I gave him the money, I thickened the colors a little. I told him that, despite my degree, I could never match him. When it came to computers, what a wonderful woman who had been treated unfairly, how grateful we could be. And I even cried. Dima called me Thursday night of the following week using a disposable phone. Check the website. He said with a chuckle. You're a genius, I said. It went much better than planned. He continued. The jerks running the site had a big hole in their security, and they paid the price for it. He said with a laugh, grateful. When I brought it to their attention, I got $100,000 richer, so I'll pay you back $10,000 if you and your friend come to get it. I'm all over it again and went in with gratitude. I checked the website, and the pictures of the video were indeed gone. I'd immediately called Rita at home and told her about his offer. She was confused. You mean because he found a hole in their security system, they gave him $100,000 and took my video pictures? I chuckled. That's what he implied, but I know that's not what happened. It was a ransomware program. He shut down the site and wouldn't give them the key to unlock it unless they paid him $100,000 in bitcoins. When he unlocked the site, the offending material was removed. Wow, was that? was her response. Saturday morning, we went to see Dima together. I knew Dan well that he just wanted to see her incarnate, and I prepared her for how to proceed. We want this guy on our side smirked at me. Rita played it right, complimenting the demon and hugging him hard twice as she was ten times more beautiful than any woman who had ever touched him in his entire life. He had a smile as wide as Mississippi. As we were leaving, she said to me, No way in the world will I tell my asshole husband that I got the money back. It will be stashed in the company's safe and human resources. When I dropped her off at her house, there were tears in her eyes, and she said, You have no idea how grateful I am and then gave me a quick and then a long kiss on the lips. I vowed never to wash my face again. On Saturday, I felt really good. However, I was still puzzled by Galia's mood swings, as she went through about ten different changes during the day and night on Saturday. We had a great time at the dance club with friends, despite her mood swings. Sunday morning, she left a cryptic note. There were some errands to run. She came back around two o'clock and immediately said we needed to talk. She showed me her phone with pictures of her cheating on several guys, arguing that I was having an affair with Rita. I was furious. I was ready to throw her out the window. She yelled at me, accusing me of all my sins. Then I couldn't stand it anymore and called Rita to explain everything to my wife. I myself left home to go out. When I came back, my wife met me with a guilty face trying to beg for forgiveness. Afterwards, she realized that there couldn't have been any apology or anything like that that she could have done to save our relationship. So the divorce went through quickly, splitting everything 50-50 without any elements on either side. 
we sold the house and moved into apartments on opposite sides of town. At that point, I was truly happy that we never had children. Rita and I remained friends while my divorce was going on, and she even joined some of my friends who took me to a no-baby game to celebrate my divorce, which was only four months after the papers were filed with Hal. We never discussed the circumstances of my divorce in detail, but because of the fact that she had met Gallia in person on that infamous Sunday, it was clear that she knew most of it. Then, two months after my divorce, Rita came to my office on Thursday. I don't remember her doing this before and closed the door. Ivan, can I take you to dinner tomorrow night? There's something really important I need to talk to you about. Sure, I answered. When? And where? How about meeting me at a cafe near the central square? All evening casual clothes, she smiled. Fine, then I'll see you soon, I replied. She smiled again and then walked out, putting the door open as if she hadn't noticed it. It was obvious that Rita was nervous during dinner. In fact, she had lost her composure to say nothing she wanted to while in the restaurant, partly because we were sitting next to several other couples. She suggested we talk in my car. I tried to pay at least half of the dinner bill, but she refused. Since the temperature outside was pleasant, we had the windows ajar, and she mostly looked straight ahead while she talked, occasionally meeting my gaze as I kept looking at her. The gist of her remarks shocked me so much that I have a hard time forgetting them. Colia keeps begging me not to divorce him and is doing everything he can to keep things quiet. He just doesn't believe that I don't trust him anymore and that fighting the divorce won't help him. It's about posting your pictures and videos on the internet, I asked. It's a big part of what's going on, because it's such a breach of trust that it boggles my mind. However, it's also because he doesn't think it was that big of a deal with other people either. He is far from noble, and in general his character is not what I imagined when we got married. Besides, I want children as soon as possible and although he said he wanted them before we were married, he doesn't now. Finally, and I probably shouldn't tell you that, getting closer to him is more like a Labor Day than a Fourth of July. There was too much information for me, and I couldn't respond in any way at first. So what do you want to talk to me about? Well, I figured out a way to make it abundantly clear to him that it's over between us, so he won't resist the divorce I filed for last week, even though we're still living in the house together. Since you're the only man I know, I think, other than Dima, but he doesn't fit all the parameters, you're the right man for the job. Wow. I said in my head, but I didn't say it out loud. Rita looked at me nervously, then turned away and continued. I'd want Colia to find us in my bedroom, looking like we just made love. He can be cruel, I asked. He can't be a violent man, Plus, he doesn't own a gun or any other weapon. There's nothing in the house except kitchen knives, which I hide, and you are four inches taller, thirty pounds heavier, and I know from our gym classes that you are in shape, and he is not, and you are twice his strength. Said Rita in one sentence, clearly very disturbed. I could think about it, I asked. I know you could do it, but if you can't, I have to find someone else. I can't think of anything as spectacular. She answered quickly. Yes, I could. Dancing would relax you and help you make up your mind. I think so. Yes, it helped. I smiled at her. Then let's go to that new dance club. She chuckled. So we did. On Sunday night, I called Rita and said, I'd agree with your plan if you still want to go ahead and think it will work. Thank you very much. Ivan. Yes, I want to do it, and I know it will work. She practically smiled over the phone. So, on Friday, I was at Rita's house by four o'clock in the afternoon. I was nervous. Rita was nervous. Even the inanimate objects in the master bedroom seemed nervous as we waited for Colia to come home. I must have asked four or five times when he was likely to arrive, but Rita was not offended that she had to answer so often. Perhaps because of her nervousness, she didn't remember me asking her before. Any time between 4.30 and 5.00, she said. Around 
we heard the outside garage door open. Then the inside garage door opened and closed, and something that looked like a briefcase was placed on the kitchen and table. When we heard footsteps on the stairs, Rita took off her robe as planned. I pretended to put on the first pant leg of my pants. I tried not to look at Rita, but it was impossible. She looked even better in real life than she did in the pictures. It was clear that there was no reason to tweak her pictures. Colia pushed open the main bedroom door, asking, Rita, are you here? When he entered, his eyes popped out of their sockets. Rita gasped and then said, I'm sorry you had to see that, Cole, but I told you it was over between us. You had to accept it. There was an unhappy expression on his face that, if I didn't know all the many good reasons why Rita was divorcing him, would have made me feel sorry for him. He sighed heavily, making a sound that was something between a squeal and a slip and a cry. He staggered for a few seconds, then turned and walked away. We froze as we heard him go down the stairs, heard the inner garage door open and close again, started his car, closed the outer garage door, then there was silence. All this time, I expected Rita to start getting dressed. She didn't. Then she came right up to me and said, I'm sorry it was so sad, but it had to be done. Thank you for your help. At this point, I couldn't help myself and kissed her. Rita reciprocated, and we made love. It was a long, indefinite period of time before we both came completely to our senses. Rita spoke first. Thank you, Ivan. It was wonderful. I grinned. Can't we thank each other, she giggled. Yes, thank you, goddess. After a few pleasant conversations in private, she got a shy look on her face. Ivan, I have a confession to make. I was hoping it might end up like this. There's no way in the world I could resist you. I replied. As I recall, the bone of contention between you and your ex-wife was your desire to have children. And she had no such desire. And correct me if I'm wrong, but don't you have the same desire that I do? And doesn't Colia have the same desire as Gallia? She had a big smile on her face. Don't you think we'll want to have children together? I know we will, but first let me have an affair with you. Since Colia is unlikely to ever come back, why don't you pack a bag and come to my place for the weekend? There's room for me in your bed, she giggled. It's a big size. It suits me, she laughed. We got dressed. She followed me to my apartment in her car. After I made her a light dinner, we had a long talk in my bed. Although our little stunt with Colia was cruel, he got it right. The day Rita's divorce became final, I glowed with happiness. After celebrating that night when we went to bed, we had the sincerest intimacy of our lives. I had never felt more relaxed when I told her without a hug that I loved her and wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. Rita smiled and kissed me. I love you too. And it's a blessing that we love each other, because I have some news, multiple paws, and finally, I'm six weeks pregnant. The next morning I kissed her and then took her face in my hands. I'm not sure I heard you right last night. You said you were pregnant? Yes. About six weeks pregnant, she smiled. How did that happen? I mixed up my pills, she answered with a big smile. I thought you were taking shots. I messed up my schedule, and that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. She replied with an even bigger smirk this time. I guess that means I have to marry you. Then joked. Does your father have a shotgun? I bet he does. And he won't let his little girl have kids without a finger ring. She bets this time with an even broader smile. Do you think I'll agree to anything you want? Don't you? I feigned anger. I didn't think the smile could get any wider, but it did. Yes, but your compensation would be that you would be the best father ever. Ten years later, life wasn't just good. It had become fantastically good. We seemed to fall more in love every month. We are madly in love with our three children, two girls and a boy. Sometimes the three women in the family team up against us, two poor types. But we always seem to survive okay, even if we don't win. The best part, besides the kids, are not growing up yet. 
It's that I don't have to look at pictures of what I think is the best female figure on the planet. Every night with me in bed is a real woman with the best female figure. Every day, I take a few minutes out of my day to thank Coley for posting these pictures on the internet and Gallia for her overactive imagination and impulsiveness.